Hello, my name is Stiley Hayward. I would like to welcome you to the Blessed Hope Ministry. We are a King James grounded family Bible study. These lessons are not to be a substitute for regular church attendance. Nightly I direct my family through the Bible by chapter and verse. We request you to join us and to study from God and His Son Jesus Christ. You may have permission to like, send, or encourage our studies with family or friends. Edification of what God has and what He desires in our life. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. You may use our studies, but I request that you do not abuse them. For YouTube videos, subscribe below for more videos. And place the thumbs up and leave a comment or email me. Thank you. Numbers chapter 16. Now Korah means ice or hail, the son of Izar, the son of Kohath. Kohath is in the family of Levi, and Dathan and Abiram, the sons of Elab, on the son of Peleth, the sons of Reuben. So we got two tribes here. We got Levi and Reuben took men. So Korah, like I said, means ice or hail. Kohath, we're going to look at him in a minute. Dathan means law or rights. Abiram, high father or father of deceit. On means pain or force. This interesting name is what they mean. And then you got Kohath. Now that's interesting. And I think, let me check in here. I got the is it Exodus 4? I don't think I wrote Exodus down. Exodus. No. Numbers chapter 4, verse 4. Kohath. I don't know what I wanted to show you. I don't see where it is. Numbers 4.4. 4. This is about Kohath. This shall be the service of the sons of Kohath. In the tabernacle of the congregation. About the most holy things. When the camp set us forward. Aaron shall come and his sons. Remember Aaron's sons are Levites and priests. All priests are Levites, but not all Levites are priests. And they shall take down the covering veil and the cover the ark of the testimony with it. And shall put thereon the covering of badger skin. And, shall, and what they do is they're taking all the stuff that's in the holy place and all the stuff that in the most holy place. And they're to cover it all up so no one sees it. In verse 15 of chapter 4. And then when Aaron and his sons had made an end of covering the sanctuary and all the vessels in the sanctuary as the camp is to set forward. After that, the sons of Kohath shall come to bear it. But they shall not touch any holy thing, lest they die. These are the things and the burdens of the sons of Kohath. Kohath had the job of carrying the Ark of the Covenant, the table to show bread, the brazen altars with those staves to be carried on their shoulders. If there was not next, next best job of the priest was the Kohites. Now Exodus 3 or 4. I, I thought it would be this note. Uh, Exodus chapter 6. Chapter 6 verse 14. Still on Kohath. See who he is. These be the heads of their father's houses. The sons of Reuben. There's that one. The firstborn Israel, Hanak, and Pelu. There he is. Hezron and Kamai. These be the family of the Reubenites. Now let's look down at verse number 16. These are the names of the sons of Levi. Here we go. According to their generation, Gershon, 
Kohath and Merari. Levi has three sons. The second one, there's Kohath. And the years of the life of Levi were 137 years. The sons of Gershon, Libni, Shimni, according to their families. The sons of Kohath, Amran, Izhar, and Hebron. Kohath has four sons. Amran, Izhar, Hebron. All right. Let's look at verse 20. Same chapter, verse 20. And Amram took him, Jochebed, his father's sister, to wife. There's that Amram. And he bared with him Aaron and Moses. So when you're looking at the family of Kohath, you are in the family of Aaron, Moses, and Miriam. Now it's quite interesting because we're going to come to it in a minute. Keep that in mind. This is Moses' family. This is Aaron's family. We just had a fallout with the twelve, with the ten uh, spies and and the children of Israel, the congregation. And we'll get into that in a minute. And they rose up. Uh, chapter sixteen of Numbers again. Now we got the ringleaders in, in verse one. Now it's not all Kohaz, it's just Korah, the son of Izar. So it's the family of Moses, but it's not the immediate family. Now, I don't know family relations, you can run it. But there it is, Kohat, the son of Levi, what we saw in Exodus 6. And Dathan and Abiram, three three people so far, the sons of Eliabeth. Eliabeth's not in charge, he's just their father. And on. So there's four men, Korah, Dathan, Abiram, On. On has the son of Peleth, the sons of Reuben. We saw that in Exodus 6. So Korah, Dathan, Abiram, and On are the four men, the, the ringleaders. I mean, I, when I first read this, I, I used to think it was the Kohites, but. And they, the four men, rose up before Moses. With certain of the children of Israel. So here's the children of Israel again. They are bound by ringleaders as they were bound with the ten spies. Now here's four men. 250 princes of the assembly. So this time we're told. Famous in the congregation. They were well known. Men of renown. And you saw that in Genesis 6 verses 2 through 4 with the giants. These men are well known. They're famous in the camp. Don't get too famous in your church. To serve the Lord and do right. And they gathered themselves together against Moses. So all these well known men and the four men in verse 1 come up against Moses. You know, Moses had a problem. Well, when have you ever seen Moses get a break? And you get these preachers, eh, our church had a church split. Read the life of Moses. That guy has had an entire congregation of the entire troops of Israel after him. He's got his family that's after him right here. I mean, they're all family, but this is immediate family. And it even got worse, which I don't want to give away right now, but it got even worse for Moses. You realize... God opened up the earth and swallowed a group of people and they walked up to Moses and said, you did that? You want to study the ministry? You want to study the life of a pastor? Study Moses. So they gathered against Moses and against Aaron and said unto him, ye take too much upon you. Have you heard that before? Mm -hmm. Let's go to chapter 12, verse 2. And this is what I, been, I didn't want to come out and say right away. Certain things when you study the Bible, you don't want to give it away right away. But chapter 12, verse 2. We'll start in verse 1. Moses. Stop your crybaby. And you know, Moses very rarely cried to the Lord in, in murmuring. And Miriam and Aaron, that is Moses' brother and sister. Spank against Moses because of the Ethiopian woman who he had married. For he had married an Ethiopian woman. And they said, Miriam and Aaron, Has the Lord indeed spoken only by Moses? 
Has he not spoken also by us? And the Lord heard it. So they're saying the same thing is going on in verse chapter 16. You think you're so important? You're only, you're only two that you, I, I don't know where they are either. I can't say that. But you realize the only two people that have not ever risen against Moses is mother and father. Now they may be dead. I don't know. But he has had his brother and sister. He has had his kindred, Kohath. And he's had all 12 tribes take a bite at him. One after another, after another, after another. Now, that's why I say, when, when God tells Moses, you're not going to the promised land, Israel will, but you're not. And he prays, say, Lord God, will you send somebody to go with them? And God says, okay, I will have Joshua. And I can moment that moment when Joshua hears that. <clears throat> what did I do wrong? Because there's one thing that God and Moses has come to a conclusion about these people. They're stiff neck and they're a pain in the butt. Why was Pilate so interesting? Listen, I want to get rid of Jesus. He's innocent. Why did Pilate crucify him? Because the Jews are stiff necked They're pains in the butt and they would not. They gave Rome a hard time. So when you read, you're to love the Jew, you're to pray for the Jew and all that, you got to realize they're very hard people to live with, according to God. <laughs> and the, the Bible says that Paul says, as far as the born-again Bible-believing Christian with the Bible, they are your enemies. And they hate you for having Jesus. But you're to love them. You're to bless them to get a blessing. They gathered themselves again against Moses, against Aaron, and said unto him, Ye take too much upon him. That's exactly what Miriam and Aaron said. Seeing all the congregation are holy, every one of them, and the Lord is among them. Everybody's holy here. Everybody, God's with everybody. Wherefore then lift ye up yourselves among the congregation of the Lord. Moses has never done that. Moses has never put himself up on any high pedestal. And when Moses heard it, he fell upon his face. He hears his complaint and Moses gets down on his face to pray. How about you, Pastor? And he spake unto Korah. So he gets on his face, he's praying to God, and he looks at Korah. That's his family. And unto all his company, everybody has, that's behind him, say, even tomorrow, the Lord will show who are his. So Moses prays before he answers. And God and Moses are giving them 24 hours to repent and get right. Tomorrow, the Lord will show you who is his and who is holy. Because remember they said, oh, the whole congregation is holy and who you think you are. God's like, all right, I'll show you who's holy. I'll show you who's right. And will cause him to come near unto him, the Lord. Now, why did he say that? Because Koah is allowed to come before the Lord by carrying upon his shoulders all the instruments of God. Even him whom he has chosen will he cause to come near unto him. This do. Take you censors, Korah, and his company. Ooh, we're getting almost like an Ahab and a bayou here. And put fire therein. Where did that fire come from? And put incense in them. That's not Korah's job. That's the sons of Aaron. Before the Lord tomorrow. And it shall be that the man who the Lord does choose. He shall be holy. The man. Not men. The man. Ye take too much upon you. Ye sons of Levi. <laughs> Moses is angry with his family. You see that? That's his family Levi. That's his tribe. And Moses said to Korah. Here I pray you. Ye sons of Levi. Ooh. Seemeth it but a small thing unto you, that the God of Israel has separated you from the congregation of Israel, Levi, 
to bring you near to himself to do the service of the tabernacle of the Lord? Whether you're a Levite or you're the priest, you are serving a God. God and God has taken you out of all the 12 tribes. And to stand before the congregation and minister unto them, that's the priest. They have a position of authority. But it's not enough. They want Moses' position. And Moses is, in actuality, by what God has said, Moses is not a priest. Aaron is. And he has brought thee near to him, God, and all thy brethren, the sons of Levi, with thee. And seek ye the priesthood also? Not all Levites are priests. These Levites, they want to be the priests. That's what they're doing. They're sick and tired of hearing about Aaron and his sons. They want to, we're the same, you know what, we're the same family, so what's wrong with us? That's what it is. It's a family argument with God. Levi is the main family member, and the offspring of Levi are having a battle right now in chapter 16. And the rest of Israel is watching this. Remember what we read today? Uh, Abram and Lot had a battle with the herdmen. And the, the people of the land were watching. It's a bad testimony. For which cause both thou and all thy company are gathered together against the Lord. And against Moses and Aaron. So, if that's the case, the sons of Reuben want to step into the priesthood too. Verse 1. And all these elders and great people renowned, verse 2. By what Moses has said, they want to get into the, look at us, look what we're doing. And what is Aaron that you murmur against him? I'll tell you what Aaron is. He's chosen by God. And Moses sent to call Dathan and Abiram. Those, verse 1. The sons of Elab, which said, We will not come up. Dathan and Abiram, come here. Psst, shut up, Moses. We ain't coming to you. So already they have disclaimed the authority of Moses. Verse 12. We're not listening to you. Is it a small thing that thou hast brought, brought us up out of the land that flows with milk and honey? Now this is Dathan and Abiram speaking. You're supposed to bring us to the land of milk and honey. To kill us in the wilderness. No. That's not Moses' job. That's not Aaron's job. That's God for your rebellion. Except thou makest thyself altogether a prince over us. No, God did. You see that they are rebelling against the authority of Moses set by God. Moreover, thou hast not brought us into a land that flows with milk and honey. No, God said you're not going. Not Moses. Or given us inheritance of the fields and the vineyards. 100% true. By your rebelling and not believing God. Wilt thou put out the eyes of these men? Boy, they're... You're going to make these men blind so they can't see anymore? They can't see what you're doing, Moses? What are you going to do, blind them? We see what's going on. You've lied to us. And we will not come up. We're, don't even talk to us no more. We're done with you, Moses. And Moses was very raw. And said unto the Lord, Respect not their offering. No intercession for these people. Nathan, I mean... I don't know where I get Nathan. Nathan and Abiram. Lord God, if they give an offer, don't even accept it. I have not taken one ass from them. Neither have I hurt one of them. And Moses said unto Korah. He turns back to Korah. Be thou and all thy company before the Lord thou and they and Aaron. And so he balls out Korah and he turns to Nathan and Abiram and says, Listen, come here. I want to speak to you guys. And they're like, No. You shut up. Get away from us. We're having nothing to do with you. And then he turns back to Korah. Come here tomorrow. Bring your censors. And take every man his censor. 
and put incense in, in them, and bring ye before the Lord every man his censer. 250 censers. Ooh, we're told how many people are in this one. Thou also, and Aaron. Aaron, get a censer for yourself. Now, Aaron is already, I don't know if I've already done it yet or not. Well, Aaron's going to be called for to bring a censer, and Aaron's going to be called to bring his rod to prove who he is. Each of you his censer. And they took every man his censer and put fire therein. I don't know where that fire came from. But shouldn't that remind you of Nadab and Abihu? Is that, I think that's chapter 12, was it? That moment when he says, you put those fire in those, in those censers, that incense, that should have been rebellion in mind of Nadab and Abihu. And laid incense thereupon and stood in the door of the tabernacle of the congregation with Moses and Aaron. So they're at that door where they bring their animals. And Korah gathered all the congregation against them unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And the glory of the Lord appeared unto all the congregation. God shows up. This is where a lot of pastors, were. They, want, they want God to show up and destroy the rebellion that's going on in the church. Some cases I've seen where the rebellion has been the church. And the Lord spake unto Moses and unto Aaron, saying, Separate yourselves from among this congregation. You find that in, in Revelation. God speaks out and says, Come out from among them. Separate yourselves among this congregation that I may consume them in a moment. Get you away from your family. Now remember, this is Moses and Aaron's family. Get your way, get yourself away from your family. Come out. That's what God told Abram in chapter 12 of Genesis. Come out of your family. But Lot went with them. Now here comes intercession. And they and they fell upon their faces and said, O oh God, the God of the spirits of all flesh, shall one man sin, wilt thou be wroth with the whole with all the congregation? That's Adam. But you know what? You know what that, that verse is implying there? God's he's got in his mind again, he's gonna wipe out Israel. <laughs> Not just the men involved, but I'm going to wipe them all out. Step outside of camp and I'll make a new nation out of you. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the congregation, saying, Get you up from among the tabernacle of Korah, Dathan, and Abiram. Again, you saw that in Revelation. Come out amongst them. Get out of there. Israel, get yourself away from Korah, get yourself away from Dathan, and get away from a barn. Now that's a free will. You have a choice. You can stay there and get the, get the judgment, or you can get away and get out. Say. And Moses rose up and went unto Dathan the barn, and the elders of Israel followed him. He spake on the congregation and said, Depart, I pray you. From the tents of these wicked men. And touch nothing of theirs. Lest ye be consumed in all your sins. So they get up from the tabernacle of Korah. Nathan and Abiram. On every side. The congregation is like. See you guys later. <laughs> Bye. That's smart. And their wives and their sons. And their little children. They just picked up and went. There you go. So they got up at the tabernacle of Korah, Dathan, and Baran on every side. And Dathan and Baran came out and stood in the door of their tent. Say, what's going on here? Checking things out. Where's everybody going? And their wives and their sons and their little children. They want to see. What's the, what's the chaos? What, why is everybody leaving us? And Moses said, Hereby ye shall know that the Lord has sent me to do all these works. For I have not done them of my own mind. It's the false charges that Moses is in charge. If these men die the common death of all men, heart attack, natural causes, being bit by a snake, tripping, falling down the stairs, or if they be visited by after the visitation of all men, if God visits them, then the Lord has not sent me. 
But if the Lord make a new thing. Uh-oh, here we go. And you got to wonder, where did he get this from? And the earth opened her mouth. Uh, I can't think what it's called now. No, when the earth opens up. We've had a few of them here in Florida. Um, sinkholes. Sink Moses is calling for a sinkhole. And swallow them up. Sinkhole. With all that appertaineth, appertaineth unto them. Everything that belongs to Korah, Dathan, and Abiram are going to go into this sinkhole. Now this is no ordinary sinkhole. This is almost like the Passover night. If there's no, if there's blood in the door, okay, I'm not touching you. You ain't got no blood, you're dead. If you belong to Korah, Dathan, and Abiram, I'm going to swallow you up. They go down quick into the pit. That's hell. Then ye shall understand that these men have provoked the Lord Jehovah. And it came to pass as he made an end of speaking. <laughs> all these words. He hasn't even finished yet. That the ground clave under the ground clave asunder. That was under them. And the earth opened her mouth sinkhole and swallow them up as sinkholes would do and their houses which sinkholes do and all the men that appertaineth under Korah and all their goods okay ruling out certain people but all the people got out when Moses told them who wanted to get out and they and all that appertained to them went down alive into the pit sinkhole now, this is where the sinkhole ends. And the earth closed up upon them. It'll, everybody falls and then closes right up. Fixed itself. It healed itself. And the earth closed up upon them. And they perished. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in should not perish. What's perish? You just read what happened to perish. They went down in the pit. That earth opened up and they went right down straight soul body and spirit went straight to hell that's perishing from among the congregation the congregation saw it and their houses went burnt up everything they own went and they're still there in hell today it's funny because you can say, well, you can't take it with you. Uh, where are their names again? Abiram, Dathan, and Korah took their stuff with them to hell. Didn't do them no good, but there it is. And all Israel that were round about them fled at the cry of them. They're crying out in misery and woe and gnashing of teeth. For they said, least the earth swallow us up all. Now Israel, while this is happening, they're going in utter chaos, running and screaming, while, uh, while the men that are falling into the pit are screaming, because they don't want to fall in. And there came out a fire from the Lord. Because they offer fire like they have in the bayou. So the earth's open up and they're falling off in that. I guarantee, it doesn't say it, but the pit. I guarantee if you were able to look down that pit, I guarantee you would be able to see hell. Hell is fire. Jesus never preached about hell, they said. And here comes fire that's from the earth in the pit of hell. And there's fire coming down from God out of heaven. And consumed the 250 men that offered incense. There's Nahab and Abihu. There's that fire they put in there. There's that story. Hey, that Nahab and Abihu, when Moses said that, it should have came into their mind and said, uh oh, something happened like this, and we're going to, uh, you need to get right. And you just picture Nahab and Abihu, they're down in hell while their family enters into hell being burnt, just like they were. 
You want to be priests? You want to offer incense you're not supposed to? Well, hey, look what I did to Aaron's sons. I'll do it to you. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto Eleazar, the son of Aaron, the priest. All right, here's the priest. Take he, I mean, that he take up the censers out of the burning, just like Nahab and Abihu. There's a pile of 250 men burning right now with their censers that they're offering. And he says, go in there, take those censers out of that fire. Remember they haven't buy you, gather them out of their priestly clothes. And scatter thou the fire yonder. They're still burning. Go in there and get those, get those incense, incense uh, labors that they put in there, the censers. Take them out, scrooge out the fire. For they are hallowed holy. Because they've been in the presence of God. The censers. The censers of those of these sinners against their own souls. <laughs> They're in hell. Let them make them broad plates for the covering of the altar. So now the altar is going to get a covering of these censers. And people, when they approach that altar, which is the first thing they see when they go into that congregation of the tabernacle, they will see that altar. They will now see the, these plates. And it is to remind them of the rebellion that just happened in this chapter. For they offered them before the Lord. It's an offering to God. God accepted it. It cost their lives. Therefore they are hallowed. And they shall be a sign unto the children of Israel. Don't you dare rebel again. And Eliezer the priest took the brazen censers. Wherewith they that were burnt had offered. And they made broad plates for the covering of the altar. This wasn't when they originally built the altar. This is an addition. All Israel can see these plates. To be a memorial unto the children of Israel. That no stranger. Korah was a Levite. But he wasn't a priest. Dathan and Byram were not priests. No stranger which is not of the seed of Aaron. All priests are Levites, but not all Levites are priests. Come near to offer incense before the Lord. That he be not as Korah and as his company. As the Lord said unto him by the hand of Moses. Now remember, Korah and his company came in and with the censers. Only Dathan and Abiram said, no, we ain't going to listen to you. We ain't going to do nothing with you. But on the morrow, all the congregation of children of Israel murmured against Moses and against Aaron. It doesn't quit for him, does it? Saying, ye have killed the people of the Lord. What did, what did Moses do for that sinkhole? Come on. Don't you feel sorry for Moses? And he doesn't get to go into the promised land? Wouldn't you be upset with these people too? The next day, they're in Moses' face. You killed those people. <laughs> now remember, it was Moses' family. I mean, he may have been touched by some of them. And they're in his face again. Ye, have, ye, Moses and Aaron, have killed the people of the Lord. So an unnatural phenomenon, I can't say the word, only by God this miracle of this earth opening up and then swallowing them down, particular people and closing themselves back up, it's Moses' fault. And there's something like that called today with, with nature and with things that happen that we, we don't blame God, we blame Mother Nature. we got to get our eyes off God. That's what they're doing. And it came to pass when the congregation was gathered against Moses and against Aaron that they looked toward the tabernacle of the congregation and behold the cloud covered it. Uh-oh. And the glory of the Lord appeared. 
And Moses and Aaron came before the tabernacle of the congregation. Here they are. They're in Moses and Aaron's face. They look over at the tabernacle. Here's this cloud. And God's glory shows up. And Moses and Aaron starts heading to the congregation to where God is. They know there's trouble brewing. And the Lord said to Moses, Get you up from among this congregation. Oh, God's ready to destroy them again. That I may consume them as in a moment. And they, Godly Moses and Aaron, fell on their faces. They're praying. They're interceding. God, I've heard preachers get upset that their church is split. Oh, those people, no. Uh, and God says to these people that are giving Moses a hard time, I'm going to kill them all. And Moses says, Lord God, please help them. They don't know what they're doing. Lord, save them. That's remarkable. And Moses said unto Aaron, now watch this. Take a censer. <laughs> we just had a problem with censers. You ever notice all the troubles you got with, with the incense in the Bible? There's a king that walks into the holy place and he's offering incense and he gets leprosy. We open up the, the gospel of Luke with a man that's in the holy place offering incense to prepare the way of John the Baptist for Jesus Christ. There's two sons of Aaron. Aaron, take a censer. We just lost our family because of censers. I lost two boys because of a censer. And put fire therein. Uh, Moses, what do you want me to do here? I just had a problem with my boys. We just had a problem with our family. You want me to... Doesn't that sound weird for Moses to tell Aaron after we just lost a whole congregation of people with censers and fire? Watch this, though. Now, here comes Aaron. He's sweating. Take a censer and put fire there on Moses from off the altar. Oh, whew, that's what I'm supposed to do. See that? From off the altar. You're the priest. You get that fire off the brazen altar, and you go in there, you get some incense, and you get the, that's the proper way. That's where Moses, that's where Aaron wipes his forehead. And put on incense. And go quickly unto the congregation. And make an atonement for them. That's the priest's job. For there is wrath going out from the Lord. He that has the Son has everlasting life. He that has not the Son shall see, shall not see life. But the wrath of God, the plague be the plague is begun. We are priests according to Revelation 1. We're to go out amongst the congregation, the world, the creatures, and tell them the wrath of God is coming and make an offering for them to, to get right with God. Um, yeah, I'm just trying to think. Aaron's quite old. Let's see real quick where he dies. Oh. Find the notes here where Aaron dies. Oh, I know my note says Aaron dies. Let's see if we can find it real quick. Yeah, well. well, Aaron is an elderly man by now. You need to see this elderly man running around. With the incense amongst the people. And the Roman Catholics have stolen this idea. You know, when the priests come walking into the assembly of the church with that smoke that stinks. Let's stick around that smell. And Aaron took as and Aaron took as Moses commanded and ran in the midst of the congregation. He's running. Ran. He ain't walking. He's in a hurry to help his people. Who had just been hitting on him and ragging on him. And in his face, he's running amongst them to help him. And behold, the plague has begun among the people. And he put on incense and made an atonement for the people. And he stood between the dead and the living. And the plague was stayed. On one hand of Aaron, there are dead men. On the other hand, on Aaron, with the, with the smoke in that incense, there are people alive. Now they that died in the plague were four. Go ahead, were fourteen thousand and seven hundred. 
besides them that died about the matter of Korah. Though there were addition. God said the next 40 years you're going to die in the wilderness and they're already dropping. And Aaron returned unto Moses unto the door of the tabernacle. Moses is still at that tabernacle and Aaron ran out. And the plague was stayed because of Aaron. He loved them people enough. He said, I'll, I'll, I'll do what I can, Moses, to help them. After all what they've done to you, what they've done to me, what they've done against God. If I don't do this, God's going to wipe them totally out. That's how angry he is.